of you know, people can use the right words, but have different definitions to them. Amen? Um, when I talk about sanctification, or I should say when the Scripture talks about sanctification in the New Covenant, it's really talking about walking after the Spirit, not walking after the flesh. Do you understand that? But some people use the word sanctification, and in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, Israel was sanctified by what they ate. They were sanctified, set apart. Everybody say set apart. Set apart by their dietary rules, by their worship of one God. It was more an outward expression of their faith. Whereas in the New Covenant, it's become an inner man. Amen? And so I'm learning, though, you have to be careful because we can use, even as believers, the same terminology, and people have different definitions. So when somebody's saying sanctification, they may not have the same definition that I have of sanctification. And their sanctification may be, don't do this, do this, don't do that, do this. And the Lord's, and I believe the biblical definition of sanctification set apart has to start by walking after the Spirit. Because I know people who can keep the right biblical dietary laws, but they're still walking after the flesh. So are they sanctified? No. I would argue you've got to be sanctified, circumcised of the heart. Amen? And that brings us to our continuing message here in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And verse 2, as we do a quick review before we go into new things here. Um, so this was Romans 8, 1. Who's got the actual King James or New King James version of uh, Romans 8, 1? Since I found out uh, some of the other biblical versions are missing half the scripture. Natty, you got that for me? Why don't you read for us again Romans chapter 8, verse 1. This is a great one to memorize. Yes, I have it memorized, but I want him to read it. There is therefore now no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Go ahead, brother, read it. Romans 8, 1 through 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay. So the first part of that is there is therefore now no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, I went over with Adam this week why some versions have half that scripture and some versions have all that scripture. So just to give you guys a brief summary, um, <clears throat> there was no complete new covenant written that was copied down from time to time to time. There were pieces of these uh, epistles, pieces of these gospels. Those are called manuscripts. Some of those manuscripts date earlier than other manuscripts. Well, when King James, he did not write the King James Bible, what he did is he put together a commission of some of the most scholarly people who looked into the existing manuscripts at that time, and they based the New Testament on those manuscripts. Well, what happens is today, because men think they're so smart, and they're not that smart, what they've done is they say, well, there was a manuscript from two years prior that was missing that verse, so we're just not going to put that verse in. And that's why in many of the versions, not all of them, but many of them, you have missing scriptures in them, and that's why. Now, the Old Testament's different. And uh, honestly, Jewish people were super, super, super. I'm not saying this because I'm Jewish, but it's true. They were super careful in how they translated. Every T that was crossed, every I that was dotted uh, was exact. They've gone back, Dead Sea Scrolls found parts of Isaiah. Not a single letter was changed from what we have today. But the New Covenant, no offense to you Gentiles, but... Uh, not so much. So let me say this, and I want you to hear me really clearly. So God is a creator of the heavens and the earth, of all that we see, and there are no lost books of the Bible. 
He didn't get confused and accidentally leave something out. The scripture is exactly what he intended it to be. And you have to have that as your foundation. Amen? And don't let anybody ever undermine that. Amen? So all that was free. So here we have Spirit Man. Everybody say Spirit Man. Spirit Man. He's inside of Christ Jesus. Quick review. And the flesh man has to be crucified, put to death. How often? Everybody say every day. Every day. Amen. Because every day, like a zombie, flesh zombie, he wants to come back to life. And so every day you got to put him to death. And you put him to death through prayer, through scripture, through fellowship with believers, through surrender and sacrifice of your life to the Spirit and to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Next review piece. Click me, please, brother. Thank you. We got stuck for a minute. So the promise was there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Quick review. Condemnation, we said, means judgment. How many of you have ever felt judgment on something you know God's forgiven you for from the past? That is different from the conviction of the Holy Spirit. See, a conviction is to bring repentance. Condemnation is of the devil to make you feel terrible for things God doesn't even remember anymore. And it's to keep you from moving on with God. Does everybody get that? So the promise was there's no judgment in Christ. The condition is you've got to be walking in the Spirit. If you're walking in the flesh, there's going to be judgment. No condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus. Not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And the promise is fulfilled of no judgment if you're walking in the Spirit. Everybody get that? And then our last uh, little review, I believe, from last week again, is the Spirit man, you're in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Everybody say new creation. And again, we said that that word is metamorphio in the Greek, and it's metamorphist. And it's a beautiful word that describes a butterfly. A butterfly and a caterpillar are the same creature, but one has been metamorphioed. He's been transformed, amen? So when you're in Christ, you are a new creation. If somebody says they're in Christ, but they're not a new creation... You can call a caterpillar a butterfly all you want. It doesn't make it a butterfly. Now, it has the potential to become a butterfly, but it's not. Amen? So, what we have to do is, if we're living like a caterpillar, know that God wants you to be transformed and living as a new creation. And you'll know that you're a new creation. When? When you're in Christ Jesus. And old things, everybody say old things. Old, fleshly, carnal things are dead, right? And how often they need to die? Every day, every day, every day. Sometimes twice a day. Amen. <laughs> All right, new things. Read for us Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. All right, so I love this little picture here. This is you. Everybody see that? I put a little tie on you here. That's you. This is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You're walking and living after Jesus Christ. Remember the bubble? You are in Christ. And when you're in Christ, there is, what's this word? Freedom. Everybody say freedom. Freedom from what? The law of sin and death. What's the law of sin and death try to do? It tries to hold on to you and weigh you down. Amen? But there is freedom. It's not like God makes this lighter so you're dragging a less heavy chain around. He removes the chain. He breaks it. Why are a lot of people running around with chains? Because they're not following after the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. This gives you freedom to be free from this. Everybody understand that? First bullet point, brother. We're on page 65. 
This emphasizes the liberating power of the Holy Spirit, who provides freedom from the bondage and consequences of sin. Provides freedom from the bondage and consequences of sin. Amen? The Scripture says, Whom the Son has set free is? There is freedom in Christ Jesus. So let me ask you this. If there's, what's this word? Freedom in Christ, why is it that so many people are still in bondage? Because they're not walking after the Spirit. They're not living after the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. They're still allowing that dead man to rule and reign over them. And when you do, you're under the law of sin and death. Are you following me? And the law of sin and death still brings death. Always has, always will. That's why I hate that doctrine of once saved, always saved. It's not that you have to worry about losing your salvation, but the thing is, you have to choose Christ. And you've got to finish with Christ. He who endures to the end shall be what? You've got to endure to the end. There's a walking out of this race. You can't give up, go back to sin, and say, well, I prayed a prayer way back when. I used to be free, but I'm not free anymore, because then you've moved from freedom back under the law of sin and death. And if you move from freedom back under the law of sin and death, the Scripture says it's better to have never known Christ than to have known Him and turned away from Him. It's like a dog returning to its vomit. I know it's a terrible picture bomb in the morning. Makes you want to eat dumb its stomach. <laughs> so a dog, when it's sick to its stomach, pukes it out and then turns back and eats the very thing that made it sick. That's what it's referencing, right? How many of you have dogs? How many of you know that what I just said is true, right? So that's the thing, guys. This is God's will for his people. We have to live in freedom. There is no choice. You can't live with this. This is death and will always be death. I don't care how many times you prayed a prayer, how many times you went to church. That's what the Scripture teaches. Good preaching, Pastor. All right. Next bullet point there, Brother Natty. Freedom through the Spirit. The law of the spirit of life contrasts with the law of sin and death. Now remember, it's two laws. Oh, did I do that? There's two laws at work. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and the law of sin and death. These are at war with each other. These are opposed to each other. These are at odds with one another. Everybody get that? Okay. Read that again, brother. The law of the spirit of life contrasts with the law of sin and death. Underscoring the transformative power of the Holy Spirit to liberate believers from the cycle of sin and condemnation. So, let's see if that's it. No. So let me go back to this one. So there's like a cycle of sin that if you're not walking in freedom, what happens, you're walking the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. But then what happens is your own desires, lust, temptations come in, And you fall back under the law of sin and death. You get involved in sin. You repent. You get right again. And then you go back to it. And it's like this whole circle that keeps going and going and going. And you never quite achieve freedom. God wants you free. Amen? Everybody say, God wants me free. free. Wants you free from the bondage of the law of sin and death. He wants you and I free. Amen? And go ahead and read this next bullet point here, brother. The freedom is not just positional, but practical, leading to a changed life characterized by spiritual vitality and victory over sin. Everybody say victory over sin. Remember that old hymn? Victory in Jesus, my Savior. We really do have victory in Christ. Amen? Um. It's part of our inheritance of the Lord, the inheritance of the saints, is freedom from sin and death. Amen? If we're not delivered from this, we're not delivered at all. Does that make sense? Now, why does this help you? Because a lot of times people are free and don't realize they're free, so they're still living as prisoners. 
I think of the story in the book of Acts. One at Peter, that the angel came after the early, uh, the first century church was praying for him, right? And the angel came to free him and broke his chains off. He thought he was dreaming. And he's just kind of hanging out in a prison cell. And the angel says, come on, Peter, let's get going. And that's when he realized, oh, this is real. And he walks out the prison door. So in our lives, Jesus has opened the prison cell, and that prison cell is the law of sin and death. He's opened the door. You just got to walk through it. I just have to walk through it. Amen? All right. So this was uh, walk in the Spirit. The Spirit, you walk in the Spirit every day. And remember, these are the deeds of the flesh, okay? And so where it says here, in, uh, go ahead and read John 8, 36, brother. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. This reinforces the freedom believers experience in Christ from condemnation and bondage to sin. This is a bondage to sin. Uh, immorality, jealousy, impurity, sensuality, outburst of anger, drunkenness, idolatry, envying, factions, disputes, sorcery, strife. All those things are deeds of the flesh, and all those things have chains associated with them. Those chains are bondages. And here's you. And when you're in the Spirit, you notice how much bigger the Spirit is, and you're in the Spirit? When you're walking in the Spirit, you're free from all this. It tries to raise its ugly head. You say, "Uh uh-uh, not today, Satan. Get thee behind me in Jesus' name. Amen? You're walking in the Spirit. You're walking and following after Christ. Everyday decision. Why are you in the Spirit? Because you're feeding your Spirit with the Scripture. You're feeding your Spirit with prayer. You're feeding the Scripture. I mean, you're feeding the Spirit with communion with the saints, fellowship with the believers, and you're doing the will of God. Amen? It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. It's not hard. It's an everyday, Lord, I surrender to you. Amen? All right. Any questions thus far? How many of you ever find that this guy doesn't die easy? Right? Now, your thing might not be Factions or disputes, your thing might be strife. Maybe you get angry real quick. Don't justify it. Works of the flesh. Amen? Well, Lord, I'm just going to have to die to myself in those areas. Amen? But you have to want to. Everybody say want to. You have to want to. You can sit here and listen to me drone on and on for the rest of your life, but you've got to have a desire to walk in the Spirit. I've been this man, and I've been this man, and I'll tell you, this man, because of God's love, is amazing. His love and His mercy. Why in the world would I want to trade this walking in the Holy Spirit for this? This gives you temporary pleasure. Somebody makes you mad, you have an outburst in response. That's just momentary pleasure but then you're going to feel terrible about it. Matter of fact, that's part of the work of the Holy Spirit. Anytime we do get involved in these things, He's going to spank your little hiney. And mine too, amen? How does He do that? He convicts us. He lets you know He's not happy with us doing these things. Isn't that right? If you ignore Him, ignore Him, ignore Him, then eventually He's still spanking, but you're not listening anymore. And that's where you get to that point. Remember we talked about your conscience being seared with a hot iron. Everybody follow me? All right, brother. Next part. Only by understanding the full context of Romans 8, 1 1 through 2, uh, believers can appreciate the profound promise of freedom from condemnation while recognizing the call to live a spirit-led life. What gives us freedom from judgment? Freedom from condemnation. Huh? Law of the Spirit. The law of the Spirit, okay. But be more precise. Who paid for your sins? 
the assurance of his word, the assurance of his blood. His blood's paid for our sin, amen? So every time the devil reminds you of the evil you did in your past, is that reminder more powerful than the blood of Jesus? No, it's not more powerful than the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, that's right, Miss Linda, I know what you mean. The blood of Jesus is more powerful than any judgment or condemnation. But if you're in the flesh, that's going to be a different story. Because that's not old stuff, that's what? New stuff. And how do we deal with new stuff? Repentance. Confess your sin to God and He's faithful and just to what? Forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And after you repent, you have to go back from this, back to what? To this. You can't repent and keep doing this. You've got to repent and go back to this, which is what? Walking in the Spirit. Amen? Walk in the Spirit. Pastor Jeremy. Very good. Repentance means to turn away from. Amen? Turn away from. And listen, it's not hard to walk in the Spirit. It just takes self-discipline. It takes you to love God more than yourself. It takes you spending time in the Word of God every day, spending time in prayer every day, and spend time with God's people as often as possible. It's really not hard. Amen? But when we live in a very selfish and self... Uh, <laughs> my pastor, John Elliott, called it narcissistic society, which is a big word, but it's a true word. Narcissism is people who are all about themselves. It's self-love. It's everything's them, them, them. You don't believe that? Look through social media. How many people post about other people's stuff? No, everybody's about their own, right? I'm not condemning it. I'm just saying. If you think you have to put a selfie up there once a day because you need the accolades of people, you're probably suffering a little narcissism, right? You probably need to find a little love from God and realize He loves you just the way you are. Amen. All right, next one. So let me talk about this slide. I like this slide too. How many more slides have I got, brother, aside from this one? Oh, I better hurry. Golly. So many slides, so little time. Romans 8.2. 8 1 was no condemnation now in Christ Jesus. And remember, if you're walking after the Spirit, the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus, you're free from the law of sin and death. You see that? Free. Back on. Free. Amen. Everybody say free. You are free. Now, here's Romans 8 2 again. This is a good one. So. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Let me come over here for you guys. Oh. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Remember, here's you walking in the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 2. God's perfect law. God's law is perfect. Everybody say God's law is perfect. God's law is not the problem. The problem is human flesh. The problem is none of us can keep God's law all the time. None are righteous. All have sinned. All have broken God's law at least once in their life. And if you break God's law, that's what sin is, by the way. What's sin? Sin is breaking God's law. Really simple. So, God's law is perfect. His law, though, equals the law of sin and death. Why? Because we're not perfect. We live in this fallen flesh of uh, the fallen nature of Adam. And because we can't keep God's perfect law, we have sin, which is breaking the law. And when we break the law, we fall under sin and death. And it's both spiritual death and can be eternal death in hell and eventually the lake of fire. Do you know Jesus talked more about hell than anybody else? Why? Because he do not want people to go there. It wasn't created for human beings. God's Desire and will is for all men to be saved. That's his will. So, what frees you from this? This right here. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You walking in the Holy Spirit 
every day. And just because you say you're in the Spirit doesn't make you in the Spirit. Here's a question for you. How do you know that you're in the Spirit? Right, but how do you know that you're in the Spirit? Say it louder, brother. How do you know you're an apple tree? Because you have apples on your tree. How do you know you're in the Spirit? Because you got the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. Gentleness, meekness, kindness, patience, long-suffering, love for God, love for people. How can somebody say they love God whom they have not seen and not love their brother whom they have seen who's made in the image of God? You can't. Everybody get it? Really simple. Okay? So, it's a beautiful thing once you realize that, hey, we're free from this if we walk in this. Now, anytime this starts to rear its ugly head, what do you got to do? Say it louder, Cecil. Put your foot on it, amen? Stomp on that old devil in the name of Jesus, amen? You remember Pastor Carl in those old revivals when we were kids, you know, we'd have the stomp on the devil. And if the devil don't like it, he can sit on attack. I never quite understood that song, but it's like, okay. <laughs> How many of y'all never heard that song before? It's pretty funny. I still don't understand it, but it's still it was a fun song. So yeah, so listen, the the spirit of death, of sin and death, tries to rear its ugly head. You are your worst enemy. What do I mean by that? This is what I mean. Satan can't make you do anything, but what he does is he whispers in your ear to allow pieces of this guy to come back into this guy. That's what he does. Everybody get it? And he's been doing the same thing for thousands of years. Matter of fact, at the end of the kingdom of God, he's going to do the same thing. Um, he's going to, I'm sure, he's going to tell, uh, do you know that Satan's let loose after a thousand years for a short period? to go throughout all the earth again, deceiving mankind. Now, this mankind are those who have been living under the rule and kingship of Jesus for a thousand years. Why would they be deceived? I'm sure he's going to tell them how great the world was back when they could live however they wanted to live and do whatever they wanted to do. But the fact is this. You're always going to be a slave to somebody. You're either going to be a slave to sin and death or you're going to be a slave to God. I'd much rather be a slave owned by God because he no longer makes us slaves, but he makes us sons and daughters. Isn't that beautiful? Uh-oh, here we go. Walking in the flesh. Here's the cycle of sin and condemnation and judgment. So you go day after day, week after week, year after year, the same stuff because dead guy tries to come back to life and tries to drop his little uh, stuff on you. How many of you know we're heading into autumn? I'm going to give you another picture bomb. How many of you know that you don't park under the trees in Abilene in autumn? I've been sharing that with Pastor Carl. <laughs> Unless you want your car painted polka dotted white, right? Because those, especially at the mall, they will drop their stuff on you. They are no respecter of persons, right? This dead guy here, this flesh, tries to drop his stuff on you every day. And every day, you've got to walk in the Spirit. Amen? How's that for a picture bomb for you, Tiffany? I'm really making you... Good thing you all had your donuts first, huh? All right, brother, where are we at? Keep reading. Uh, Romans 8, 3 through 4. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Now, I'm not sure if I've got that one up here. Yeah. Here we go. So the righteous requirement of the law is now fulfilled in us if, everybody say if. Yeah. 
if you put to death the deeds of the flesh and walk in the Spirit. That's it. Amen? Walk in the Spirit. Man, the Lord Jesus really made a way for you and I to live out this Christian life. Listen, the first century church, guys, they didn't even have a New Testament Bible. All they had was the Old Testament Scripture and a relationship and prayer life with Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit and was enough to allow them to be overcomers. Amen? Amen, Pastor. All right, read bullet point number one, brother. Jesus, Jesus' sacrifice fulfilled the demands of the law for righteousness that we could never achieve by ourselves. How many of you heard of the Lord Jesus fulfilling the law, right? Jesus fulfilled the law. What did that mean? That means He lived a perfect, sinless life. Fulfilled every obligation to the law so that He could become our purchase price with His blood for our salvation. Everybody understand that? So He fulfilled the law. That's why I tell people today who think they can add to what Jesus has done, you can't add to the righteousness of Christ on your best day. It's enough to walk in the righteousness of Christ that He's given you and I. There's freedom in that. Everybody say freedom. Not freedom to sin, but freedom to what? To walk in the Holy Spirit. And you see how much bigger that dude is than you? Man, the Holy Spirit's a pretty powerful fellow, amen? And He will empower you to love God and to love uh, His kingdom and will empower you to keep this dude dead and gone and to follow after the things of the Spirit. Amen? Um, walking in the flesh. I think I talked about that. Very good. All right. Next bullet point, brother. Romans 8.4 emphasizes that the fulfillment of the law's righteous requirement happens in those who do not walk in the sinful nature or the flesh, but are guided by the Spirit. So what happens, do you think, if somebody is a believer in walking after the flesh? They are no longer fulfilling the demands of the law of righteousness, but they're fulfilling the law of sin and death. And what is the end result of the law of sin and death? Death. Death. What kind of death, Natty? Spiritual death. And what else if we don't repent? Long-term eternal spiritual death. Amen? Lake of fire stuff. Everybody say lake of fire. Somebody asked me once, what's a lake of fire? It's a lake made of fire. It's not hell. Hell's cast into the lake of fire eventually. It's not a good place. Amen? So, uh, I don't even like thinking about it. It's just a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. And Jesus died on our behalf. So we didn't have to go there. Someone say, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. All right, next bullet point, brother. It is only through living by the Spirit's guidance that we can truly live in righteousness, free from condemnation of the law. And how often does the Holy Spirit want to guide you and I? Every day. Every day. Now, one of the best ways to get guidance from the Holy Spirit is to ask Him. Everybody say, ask Him. How many football players we have in here this morning? Joshua, imagine that. So, so let me ask you this, Joshua. Who calls the plays for your team? Does the coach or the quarterback? The coach does, right? Okay. What if you guys get out there and what if the coach made a rule that in order for him to give you a play, you have to ask for it? And what if you went out there and you didn't ask the coach for a play? Y'all are going to say hi and be looking at each other like, what do we do now? So here's the thing. The scripture says you have not because you ask not. Every day you ask him for guidance. Even the simplest things, amen? He's there for us. <clears throat> but if you don't ask, don't blame Him for not guiding you. Don't blame God. God, where are you? He's there. He's waiting for you to ask Him what Joshua's play is. That's a good analogy, isn't it? I like those football analogies. 
Next one, brother. Walking in the Spirit means we live empowered to meet God's standards, not by our own ability, but through the transformation the Spirit brings. Yeah. So listen, so every day you don't have to wake up and look in the mirror and say, today you're going to live right for God. No, it's not you. It's a work of the Spirit. You yield to the Holy Spirit. You pray, you get into His Word, you trust, you ask Him to guide you and lead you, and it's going to happen natural. It's a byproduct. Amen? How many of you have to look in the mirror and say, today you're going to get along with your spouse? No. <laughs> you are kidding, right, Jen? Okay. Okay. I say, we're talking about that in a couple of weeks. So, yeah. So, it, it's a natural byproduct of your relationship. Amen? And same thing with God. Listen, it's, it's a relationship. Everybody say a relationship. None of this is hard, guys. It's so easy. Children can get it. We just make it harder than it's supposed to be because the, here's, here's why it's hard. I'm going to close with this thought. Here's why it's harder than it should be. is because the flesh wants to do what the flesh wants to do. And the flesh wants to stay alive while we pretend to walk in the Spirit. That's the whole deal. And you can't do it. The two... One's got to be the winner. One's got to be the primary thing that you yield your life to. Amen? Everybody get that? Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, guys. Very good. So listen, let me give you a little bit of housekeeping before uh, we close out with a word of prayer today. So um, next weekend, uh, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to a pastor's conference with my wife in, where are we going? Kansas City, Missouri. And um, so anyway, but we've got the feast days coming up. Pastor Carl, listen. He was an associate rabbi for like 18 years. He knows more about this than even I do. And so you guys uh, come out if you can. Learn what you can. I'll be back. Uh, like I said, I'll just be gone one Sunday and then I'll be back. Pastor Jeremy's going to be teaching my Sunday school class next Sunday. So y'all come support the church, support the work, support brother. Amen. And Pastor Carl's going to have the pulpit. Sound good? Y'all going to miss me? I'll miss y'all. But I am glad to get out of town to uh, hang out with some pastors. and Y'all be praying. I'm, I want to hear a word from the Holy Spirit. Amen? I'm traveling all this distance. I'm like, Lord, surely there's going to be a word from the Lord for me. Amen? And so I'm trusting and believing God. So let's all stand to our feet.